All right, three, two, one, go. All right, so this is Hotline Miami. Uh, basically, in short, you get phone calls, they tell you to kill people, and you go kill them. Pretty simple game. So normally you have to answer your phone to start a level, but for the first level you can just get your mask that it gives you. But since it's New Game Plus, we're going to be using Brandon the whole time. All the masks give you different secret powers. Not secret, they just give you powers. Uh, Brandon says he walks faster, so that's what we're going to be using for this run. Luckily I only have to select him once. So here I'm going to try to do this so I can throw slid him through the wall, just save a little bit of time. But it's a valuable skill to have later in the game. And we die. Oh yeah, by the way, donation incentive. Every time I die, I donate a dollar. Cap it at 60 because I'm going to die a lot, quite possibly. Uh, depending on Hot and Heavy and Vengeance, we might hit that goal real quick. Those are going to be the real money makers. So we're at one already, although I'd like someone else keeping track of that. So I don't have to worry about it. Alright, and that's the first level. Well, actually, there's a little boss right here. So there are a couple bosses in this game. This one, you literally just kill a hobo. There we go. Good job. Alright, I throw the bat out there because this game is actually about trying to get as many violent weapons on the streets of Miami as you can. So at the end of every level, I'm going to try to throw one out. It wants you to talk to that guy for story, but it doesn't make you actually do it, so... You're not going to get any story in this game because I'm going to skip all the dialogue, so don't worry about it. Alright, so no talk is pretty simple. The only thing that really matters for no talk is it's going to be one little thing where I can save a little bit of time. If I can knock this guy into the wall, he goes into this thing where I just have to hit him once instead of doing a ground execution. That guy didn't get lured by my gunshots, which really sucks, so I have to be a little slower doing this. Yeah. Yeah, so that sucks. That's another death. If that guy doesn't get lured, it's really slow. Uh, this game is notorious for having obscene amounts of RNG, but, wow, both in the, the weapons and in the enemy AI. Hopefully, we'll get good RNG for most of the run. There. So basically, in this game, how the enemies respond to gunshots, you'd think they just hear it and come running. When they hear a gunshot, there's a random chance. Either they'll respond to it and run at you, or they'll respond to it by looking in the direction and getting like a trigger finger, like a hair trigger finger if they see you. Uh, or they'll do nothing. So <laughs> sometimes you want them to be lured, and sometimes you don't want them to be lured, uh, but you have no control over what happens. So. You can try to mitigate it by using guns that fire a lot of weapons, or fire a lot of bullets quickly like the assault rifle, otherwise it's random. So overdose is where we get our first thing of weapon RNG really mattering. If this guy drops a gun, my strat is going to be a little different than if he doesn't drop a gun. So here it's fun, I, get, I grab a frying pan through the wall and throw boiling water on that guy. Uh, this wall I can shoot through. I got the Uzi here, which is really good. So yeah, weapon RNG is pretty great. Yeah, the yellow walls, you can shoot through them, so that guy never stood a chance. You only see them like twice in the game. They never, it never tells you about it either. A lot of stuff in this game, it never tells you about. The same throw slip doesn't tell you about it at all, and there's literally a mask that uses that as its power, so it just leaves you to figure it out. This game is not coded well, by the way. If, um, little fun fact, if you use a wireless mouse, it runs slower, but if you have three wireless mice plugged in, it runs faster. I'm not making that up. Also, uh, if you have a printer connected to your computer, it runs a little bit slower, too. So this is going to be tough to do on the first try. Basically, uh, in this game, it takes like a little second for him to do the animation of putting on the mask, and that uh, messes up the cycle for some levels. But after that, it should be pretty good. There we go. So that guy didn't get lured again, which sucks for me. Alright, hang up here. I want the assault rifle. This is going to be a lot of enemy AI RNG. Hopefully, it can get a good cycle. No, I'm not. Okay, and now here's the first boss. Uh, basically, you need to shoot him three times with a shotgun, but... Oh, that one's out of ammo, that's bad. You need to shoot him three times with a shotgun, but uh, it gives you one. And 
They made it so you can just shoot him twice, then kill him. They forgot to force you to shoot him three times, so that's cool. And we gotta save this girl. Yeah, so basically there's these little sequences where you talk to yourself and we're going to skip all of them, so. I appreciate them letting you skip the dialogue because it's pretty cool the first time you play the game and after that it gets annoying. This chapter is basically enemy luring RNG, the chapter. There's one even later that's much worse, but this one is just like super prevalent on this first floor. So basically I'm yeah, kill this guy, come in here and kill two of these guys. I look like I'm a soul rifle, so I can make this a little more consistent. Just Hopefully lure as many of them as possible, but not too many so they kill me like that. That was just bad placement on my part though. Wow. Alright, so yeah, sometimes the AI just ninjas you and there's nothing you can do about it. I mean, you can try to mitigate it. I wasn't exactly saying the smartest place there, but it was still unfortunate I did. This dog is gonna come for my shit in a second. No, he's not. You can kill guys through the windows, and speaking of killing guys through windows, you can literally do this. Makes it a little bit easier. So I want a melee weapon heading up here. Uh, by the way, rip headphone users for this. Uh, hopefully I don't, I don't fail this chapter at all, so you only have to hear this once. Right here. Really freaking loud. And I failed the chapter, sorry guys. Not great, we take it. So fun fact, uh, that door spray has it all wired up because it's wired to explode, obviously. They're so lazy in this game, the one other time a door gets knocked off its hinges also is wired up, despite there being no reason for it to be, so we'll see that a little while later. So in this level, I'm going to do my best Gordon Freeman impression, and the crowbar is going to carry me through the whole thing. This actually has some of the most difficult movement out of any level in the game, because you got to be really quick. So hopefully, I already messed it up, but uh, I actually might be able to salvage this. We'll see. I'm just going to have to go back and do some shit. Alright, I'm just going to have to go back and kill these guys that I missed. And yeah, knocking them down is unfortunate, but sometimes it just happens. Alright, cool. Up here we're going to see a peen guy. The peen guys actually like will fuck your shit up if you give them a chance to. So you have to kill them really quickly. I actually left a guy alive up there. And he almost just killed me, so I'm really glad I didn't mess it up. Next chapter, clean hit in the game's storyline is the first uh, political mission you do. It's literally meaningless though, it's just a fun fact. Uh, the first screen either is going to look amazing or it's going to take me about 30 tries. So hopefully it can be the former, but yeah, it's not called clean hit for nothing. So we made a janitor here, they're kind of important to the plot, but again, we don't care. So here what I'm basically going to do is I'm going to use the assault rifle here to uh, kill this guy and lure a guy and if I can knock him down, wow he didn't get lured, okay. So here, I missed him, that's actually really bad, uh, okay, we still have a chance though. Nope. Yeah those guys are insane, the waiters, luckily their AI is trash, if I can get a human shield it's going to be much better. There we go, and now I can just kind of do this and kill all of them except for that guy. Here, I'm gonna shoot to lure these guys, and hopefully they both come running without shooting me. Yeah, no, this is, uh... We're definitely hitting that fast 60, but that's fine. We're doing it for charity. Quad kill? Yes.
The quad kill is sick. There's a triple kill with a bat later, but it's not as cool because you don't just decapitate four dudes with a fire axe. Rocking out. So here, this is Neighbors. This is another boss chapter. This is actually probably the hardest boss fight in the game. So hopefully it'll go smoothly. But first, Neighbors is actually a super fun level. I mean, now that I'm saying it's simple, I'm going to fuck it up horribly. But it's basically you just kill a bunch of dudes with melee weapons and guns. Like, not much thought to it. It's a lot of reacting, which is the way the game's going to go in the later stages. Playing the wrong music right now. This is actually oh, so fun fact about the music. Uh, so the track you're playing right there is Crystals by Moon. This is Hydrogen, also by Moon, and it plays four times in the game, once for every boss chapter. So if you hear this music, you know shit's about to go down. So here I'm gonna try to lure the fat guy and beat shot him so he doesn't kill me in his death throes. Also, I lost the bat, which is great. There we go. I really want a melee weapon for the next floor. Oh, that cycle is awful. Luckily, I somehow salvaged it. This is a uh, trash. Alright, cool. So now I get a phone call telling me to go kill some dude just being a dick. So that's what I'm about to go do. Yeah, he's left quite the swath of destruction in his wake. Uh, we actually get to see this later on, so that'll be fun. Alright. So basically, I have to wait for him to cleave me. And then I dodge it. And if I dodge it two times, the third time, he throws it. And then you hit him. And you have to do that twice. Unfortunately, he like moves really fast because I'm wearing Brandon. Also, when he throws it, there's a random chance it just bounces. It makes this really depressing thunk. And then he just gets invincible and you have to kill yourself on him. There's nothing you can do about it. Oh, that was really bad. Almost really bad, I should say. I'm really close. I don't like this. Okay, right, cool. Also, I got him really, I, you want to try to get him really close to the door for the cleaver throw. So I have to execute him. Uh, there's actually a couple viable masks for speedrunning. Uh, Brandon is one of them, but Brandon has a massive time save on this level just from having to walk back and forth across that massive swath of hallway. So yeah, the scoring in this game, uh, score attack is very different from speedrunning. Sometimes you get an A plus from speedrunning, oftentimes you don't. Uh, usually, if you're gonna go for a score attack, you use the Zack mask, which gives you a longer combo window. So you just get like a combo for the whole level, and that's how you get fat points. But sometimes it happens with Brandon. So this level uh, has unique music, it's a disco, the music's a lot louder than it is in other chapters. This level also has probably one of the more precise triple kills, yeah, it's gonna have to take a couple tries. There we go. Actually, that guy's not dead. There we go. They make a different noise if they just get knocked down, or hopefully I can lure the dog so it doesn't fuck my shit up. Now I'm gonna have to be careful because oh wow that guy's actually just stuck. That's awful for me. I can't believe this is happening. Yeah, <laughs> I can't, that guy was literally just stuck over there. I'm like approaching him to suck. Oh man. Yeah, sometimes you just suck. If I'm if I'm early on that swing, this is what happens. There we go. I actually got really lucky there. part I want to try to lure guys. I might die a million times here. This part is really precise and uh, a little RNG dependent. That guy's knocked down, not dead.
Now we start getting to the rough levels. So Crackdown is actually one of the levels that Brandon has an insanely different run than Tony, which is the other mask people use. Uh, I'm gonna use my speed to try to bait guys and then hopefully make it out unscathed. So right here, I'm gonna hit this guy and then run through the door to kind of reset his the enemy's aggro on me. Here I just have to yellow it and hope they don't kill me. Baiting him is the best thing that can happen. Actually. Here is gonna suck. Can I get the laser? No. Oh my god. Okay, so now the cops show up so I can just leave. There's literally one cop you have to deal with here, but you can just punch him and then you're good. The police are awful at their jobs in this game, by the way. They let me just That was the SWAT team too, that just let me waltz out of that building. So now we're at hot and heavy. This is like a real make or break chapter. This is the first like, there's a couple levels in the end of the game that are basically just fortresses and there's just a ton of dudes. And this is the first one of that ilk. I could very well die like 80 times on this. So first off, this guy right here, up that guy is literally Jesus. Uh, he will snipe you from about like 3 million feet away. Alright, so I did the first screen. Okay, if I knock that guy down, it's basically over, but luckily, can I get this guy in time? Amazing. That was very lucky. I need a gun here. Oh, wow. Alright, whatever. Alright, so I want a melee weapon here. I can always pick one up later, but I'm I just going into the room with it, so I don't have to worry about it here. This room sucks. So, I actually, I'm pretty sure I already just lost because I aggroed this dude. Yeah. One, that guy is another Jesus mobster. There's a lot of them. Having the bat here is also atrocious because it means the AI. So the bat, uh, I'll explain that for a second. The fun fact that enemies in this game actually have different uh, swing speeds. The bat has one of the slowest, which is sometimes good because, oh my god, that dog is going to destroy me. I didn't even notice him. So sometimes it's good to have a slower swing speed because it's easier to get a multi-kill. And sometimes it's worse to have one because in situations like that, you just like can't react to the second guy. So I'm actually gonna, if I die again, which I probably will here, I'm actually gonna pick that guy's golf club up instead. Wow, or I'm gonna mess it up horribly. Yeah, so hot and heavy. There's this screen and then one more, which is potentially even worse. It's unfortunate that I'm messing up so much, but it's just to be expected sometimes. You don't always get what you want with this game. Okay, cool. So I could potentially make up time if I do really on this third one. So this one is heavily dependent on weapon RNG. This is a much more difficult strat with Brandon, but I'm not going to attempt it in this setting because it's going to be awful. So I kill that guy and hopefully just kind of lure a bunch of you guys. So when I said there was a level later where there would be a lot of luring, it's this one. But I hope you like knockdowns. It's actually really unfortunate that not that many guys got lured, so now I have to be a little more careful. Alright, there's two guys left over there. I'm actually just gonna play this super safe. He still didn't get lured? Yes, he did. So I'm just gonna wait for him here. And then there's one guy left that. So that wasn't horrendous. I've definitely had worse hot and heavies. But yeah, that can happen sometimes in that stage. There's two more that are really like that. Deadline, which is the chapter that's coming up, is like a little bit of a break. Yeah, you can see like massive amount of stuff you get just from how long the level goes on for. Uh, this Deadline this is another boss chapter. It's uh, it's a little different. There's a guy there that's a cutscene if you walk too close to him, so we just make sure to skirt the edge to avoid that. It's literally like half a second because you can skip through all the dialogue, but. It's not ideal. 
Dang. So this is one of two jump scares in the game. I call it a jump scare. The first one's that exploding room where if you don't know any better, it literally just destroys you. And here I want to kind of... So you can lock on with middle mouse, which is sometimes nice to do. I want an assault rifle ideally heading into this chapter so I can lure a or into this floor so I can lure a bunch of dudes. Wow, that's amazing. Uh, real quick. So yeah, Hollow Miami is a horribly coded game, and this actually literally happened at GDQ and Snowfats run it, so we're just gonna pick up where we left off. Wow, I'm actually doing really well too, that's a shame. Oh well. Sometimes we pay the price for these types of things. If that's gonna be up there and mess me up, that's like really annoying. I'm moving you all the way down there, there we go. Wow. Alright, so actually, this actually makes my run invalid, so even if I PB, I can't submit it, so I'm gonna exit out live split. No, I don't wanna save my splits. That's alright. This is for fun anyway. Serious runs happen at home on streaming. So since I'm gonna have to reselect Brandon here, I'm gonna have to kill myself intentionally. Actually, this level I don't have to, it's one of the few I don't have to because it won't mess up any cycles. You also can't shoot if you're outside, which is why I kept dying there because I was trying to shoot while I was outdoors, which is no bueno. No gunshots on the streets of Miami. Okay, so here I just want to kill this dude and see if I'm luring anyone, which I am. Get him. I have this nice suppressed pistol that won't lure people as often, but this is actually still ass. He's alive. I want a melee weapon for this next one. My movement was actually bugged there, so I'm amazed it didn't kill me. The thing I've learned about Hotline Miami is that if you get lucky, it's just gonna punish you later. Um, yeah, like that. Like, if you if you get lucky on something you should have died on, I found generally you find a way to mess up whatever uh, thing that you normally get. I need a decent gun for this. So this is the next boss, it's gonna come flying through the window, so just be ready for that. It's really loud, so if you're at home, it doesn't sound great. I have to dodge the first Molotov, I lose because I didn't pick up a shotgun. I'm just gonna pick it up first. Dodge the first Molotov, kill one more fat guy, two mobsters, dodge the second Molotov, or run right into it. Like, Yeah, also, guns in this game, unlike a lot of first-person shooters, actually, which I find kind of ironic, actually fire from the end of the barrel and not from uh, your head. So if you're right in someone, you can't shoot them. So yeah, this guy surrenders, and this is what we do to people who surrender in Hotline Miami. And those are the blown-up doors, by the way, with the cable in them. Or they're just supposed to be cracked. That's actually more likely now that I realize it. So that's something that the developers are smarter than I thought, and I'm the idiot, so... Point at me and laugh. Uh, I don't have to worry about my splits now. Unfortunate the run dies in terms of legality like that, but if I PB, I will still be happy because no one can do that. So yeah, this, uh, if you got attached to that girl, uh, sorry, because she's dead now. Uh, this guy kills me. But then I go up and talk to this dude. He's a guy I avoided talking to a lot of times. Oh crap, my head explodes. Now we're in a hospital. So we get to play Metal Gear Solid for a chapter here. Hot tip, confess to the police. It gives you a bunch of fun ones for this chapter. It's like, you've done enough, let go. There's a couple like that. I think I literally just already missed a cycle, so that's great. So yeah, if you move for too much in this game, in this chapter, your head, like, you get a headache. You just gotta deal with it. So I actually am, I think, screwed right now if I kind of cheese it I might have a chance okay cool
Also, there, it applies like a random directional modifier to your, uh, oh yeah, you didn't call me. It applies a random directional modifier to your um, movement in this game, so you just like wobble around, and for like, trying to avoid the weird lines of sight on the guards, it kind of sucks. But that's trauma. Then we get to deal with this awful cutscene. So new game, any percent is a little different from all levels. Uh, there's a couple level skips, but honestly, the biggest time saver between all levels and any percent is that any percent is allowed to all F4 their game here to skip the cutscene and load up the next chapter, which we can't do. Yeah, basically my apartment got destroyed. There's a reason, but again, it literally doesn't matter because we don't care about that right now. Assault. So there's two awful chapters at the end of the game, and it's this one and the one after it. So we'll see how this goes. Oh, I aggroed that guy. That's a problem. Yeah. Yeah, if they see you, they get like a hair trigger, like the next time they see you. Get him. Wow. Yeah, so, okay, so actually this is a good time while I'm messing up this to talk about uh, the new enemy type we have here, the police. So the police are pretty much the same as regular mobsters, except for two really annoying things, which is that they can't be knocked down, or sorry, not they can't be knocked down, they can't be standing executed, like with a throat slit, as well as if you, uh, I need, a, I actually need like a full assault rifle. As well as if you knock them back into a wall, they don't do that sitting up thing, they just fall down, so it's like to execute them. So they're just really annoying to deal with. Wow, I ran out of ammo. Also, there's a mechanic in this game, where it applies to me too, so it's not like it's just the AI, but uh, if you get hit by a single bullet, so like the edge of a shotgun spread, or like one bullet from the assault rifle, there's a chance you survive, and the police have like a slightly higher chance to survive. So that much more fun, yeah. So I'd be a little more cognizant of that here, because sometimes they'll just live and just, I have to make sure to get them a little burst, there's nothing I can do about it otherwise. Move a little slower through here and die anyway. Yeah. Yeah, right there, so you saw it, his blood came out, so that, that was unfortunate, because I actually really could have used that kill. That's my bad for not shifting ahead, because I know that guy's coming. Yeah, so this level is, in terms of like, having to deal with like, random crap, there are worse levels in the game for sure, but what sucks about this level is that you have to deal with random crap against the police, which are just like a much stronger enemy type. So I'm gonna be a little more cautious. So here I'm just gonna. Oh, I know what's going on. Wow. That guy lived too. Yeah, so this is a great example of a screen that kills a run. Luckily, my run is already dead, so now we're just doing this. And I raise money. Yeah, again. So that's three times now to just the bullet. It should be good now. What are you doing? Wow, he lived. So those guys you only have to shoot once and they die, but I guess I shot him not enough. So like that guy down there, even though uh, he's like alive for now, is gonna be dead later on. So yeah, they're the door screen too. I'm beefing it, as Snowfats would say. Yeah, sometimes it just happens in a run, which is unfortunate. The unfortunate thing about a marathon is that you can't reset. <laughs> uh, so we're just gonna take this one a little bit slower. He's alive. Amazing. So 
So yeah. So while I slog through this, I can talk a little bit about the plot in this game. So basically, you're this guy, and the reason I'm playing the police now is because I've tracked down the dude who shot my girlfriend. He's another operative of like the organization that we accidentally worked for, which uh, is just this uber nationalists. Please die. Thank God. So now I just need a melee weapon for the next phase. So there's a boss here, but we can just run through. Wow, that guy almost destroyed me. So ideally I want to pump for this part, or I can go too far out and die. So his attack pattern sucks, like look, he's dead now, those guys are both dead, these guys are not coming for me. Here's a little fun thing, there's supposed to be a cutscene where you have to do a lot for this guy, you just hit him through the wall and skip that entirely. It's like actually one of the few like legit skips that New Game Plus does, and also I threw that gun too far, so we're gonna attempt this slow and steady. That was actually terrifying. So that's a soul. I said there were two awful chapters. That was one of them, and we fell prey to the awful. Shist happens, as they say. I'm not gonna sweat about it. Coming up is the other awful chapter, so if I can do well on that one, then it'll make up a little bit of time. Like 177 seconds. So like when I do well, it's like 105, so I lost, what, 70 seconds on it. Oh yeah, I forgot there, you don't get the phone calls anymore, because they're all dead. Yeah, so Vengeance is the other real rough chapter here. So basically here, I need to lure this guy down here, kill him, kill them, and then there'll be one more dude coming. Alright, cool. Doing that on the first try is actually huge. Made up for my shitty ass assault. So here I actually messed up, I'm supposed to come in with the gun. Luckily I can get one from that guy, just a little bit slower. Because I need to kill them. There's a fat dude over here, and you can't kill them with melee weapons, they have to be killed with guns. Wait for these guys to pass. These guys are other Jesus enemies. Look, I can just get a double kill there, and I trivialize them. Did I get the kill on that guy? Nope. Alright, so I actually just destroyed Vengeance, which I normally screw up on, so I made up for my awful assault. So speaking of getting destroyed, press F for this guy. But... He's a pos, so... We don't feel bad for him. Alright, so now we go to the first boss, or the first final boss. There's a final boss in a post-game. So this guy uh, is actually pretty simple, but if you mess up, he just destroys you. So it's like a pretty straightforward strategy, but definitely possible to flub awfully. We get to fight Tommy Wiseau, who's taking control of the Mafia. This is brutal. Alright, alright, we're good. 
So yeah, so this is the end of the story for our first gentleman jacket, Ryan Gosling, because this his game is just Drive the video game. So we sit through this little cutscene right here. Can I get a time check? Now, last part, this is the post game, we actually get to play as a different character, uh, we call him Biker because he's a biker, <laughs> pretty pretty simple. Uh, he's a little different than Jacket, so you don't get to, you don't get to choose a mask with him. Uh, you start with, you have a meat cleaver, which is just like basically a better version of the knife, and you get three throwing knives, and you can't pick up weapons either, so you just kind of come and do your stuff. Wow, I actually have never had that happen to me before at that range. So I just saw something new, cool. So here we just literally have to either aggro a guy, which I'm not getting right now, or I can aggro him like that. So biker's levels are actually pretty tough. They're like pr pretty straightforward, but the, the limited uh, weaponry compared to what you're used to is definitely uh, in the works. Also, because you've just been playing Jacket for so long at this point. Wow, well, actually, I might as well suicide. If you miss a knife there, you're just done so. Uh, you've been playing Jacket for so long at this point that, like, switching to someone else is just, like, a real disorienting. Luckily, if I whip a knife into a wall, I can pick it up. There we go. We've got three more chapters and two of which are main one of which is only story so it's just a little bit of movement uh and one of which is like very very simple boss fight but a potential for a nice time save so this right here is like the last traditional combat chapter so hopefully we can get through it without too many problems so i want to come up here and i actually want to really aggro this dude up here nope so now i have to just pray to get me nice this guy's annoying too so I actually want to kill that guy last. Here I'm just mercy to the enemies. I need to hope that they get aggroed in the right way. That guy got aggroed, that's not good for me. Alright, they saw me, that's bad. Wow. Yeah, so this level is actually really tight. It's one of those levels, it's very straightforward. It's like a full house, which is the crowbar level. It's very straightforward, but it's also very tight. So, it's very precise. Wow, that guy's actually just running with the golf club. So the cleaver is very powerful, but it's also a short range. Biker also moves pretty slow. He moves as slow as Jack, it's the base speed. So here we're just gonna. All right, cool. All so I'm um, hopefully I can hit the big time skip in this level, but if not, it's not the end of the world. So this we actually get to play the uh, biker fight, but from biker's perspective, and he has a different recollection of events as it were. Yeah, this whole game is about unreliable narrators, a game about games and such. So uh, yeah, so here if you remember this phone company, it caused some carnage here if I like, but I don't have to kill any of these guys. So in here I want to try to hopefully kill this dude so I can skip his cutscene. Now if I can hopefully get this, I have to kind of skirt and then approach him from here. I didn't get it. You can uh, go through the wall, which saves just walking back out this way. If I had approached him a little more perpendicularly, I probably could have gotten it. Unfortunato, but such is life. You gotta be precise. So 
So there, that phone call isn't telling me to kill people. Since I just rebelled against like the organization I work for or whatever, it's just a phone call telling me that my tombstone's ready for pickup. Fun little death threat, except then I go and kill the people who sent it to me, so it's not really uh, that effective of a threat. Wow. So here, actually these guys are lucky. They deserve to die, but it takes too much time to kill them, so we're just gonna skip their cutscene. All right, time is coming up. As soon as I get on the bike, and time. Cool. 39.34. Cool. Okay. Lit. So yeah, I can actually, I don't need a VOD for anything longer than 28 minutes, so I'll probably just submit that as the time. Uh, Cause I know I can do it, and hopefully PBR. But yeah, so that is Hotline Miami. And uh, I hope someone's keeping track of how much money I need to donate. I hit the 60. Yeah, amazing. Aggie 88's not that bad for how awful that assault level was. Uh, so, also, one thing I said if I got sub 40, uh, there's two bonus chapters in this game. So, I'm going to attempt to do them with Nigel. Uh, and his mask ability is that you uh, move, your controls are reversed. So, if people wanted to like do the throwing or whatnot, now would be a fun time to do that. So I can hear the dudes. Ah. I'll just do this until whatever's up next is not ready. Because I'm not sure if I'll be able to. I've actually not completed my Nigel run uh, yet. It's pretty disorienting. There's a way to cheat with Nigel where you just go into your movement controls and reverse them. So it just reverses them back to regular Wasta. That's kind of defeats the spirit out of it. Also, the bonus chapters are designed to be very difficult. It's literally just open. Wow, I have went horribly. They're literally just open spaces with like not much. Uh, not much else going on. Alright, I don't know how I'm gonna manage to kill this dude. If I can hopefully aggro him. No. Alright, this is gonna be rough. No, he got me. Whoa, I reflect a little bit. So alternatively, for uh, another mask that's pretty fun, which I also have a much better chance, which I have actually been in the game with this guy, uh, Oscar, Nick and Mulrat, he puts this fun filter on it. Whoa! I didn't see him coming. Oh, that guy's stuck in the door. I made a really annoying noise. You guys are lucky enough to hear it. That, what's actually the most difficult about this part about uh, Oscar isn't really not being able to see the enemies, because once you know where they are, it's pretty straightforward. 
It's definitely not being able to see your curse that well. Wow, the game also just crashed again. Thank you, Denaton. So, I think I'll use this as an opportunity to call it. Thank you all for watching. Hope you put on a decent enough show. And thank you.